this episode, we go partly metal, partly real, as we discuss Silverhawks. Tally Hawk! Darn it! Hello friends and welcome to Days of Dorker Past. My name is Rob and in this episode we're going to talk about the Silverhawks. Silverhawks aired in syndication in 1986 and was Rankin and Bass's follow-up, The Thundercats. What Silverhawks was, was a group of outer space policemen, if you will, that patrolled the Limbo Galaxy. The members of this specialized police unit willingly had, a safe estimate would be, 90% of their bodies coated in metal. They also had cybernetics, which allowed them to have laser blasters in their shoulder and thrusters in their feet and in their elbows and retractable wings underneath their arms. Now, that's some dedication. The Silver Hawks were led by Stargazer, who looked like he was straight out of a detective pulp novel from the 40s, albeit he had half a cybernetic face and a cybernetic arm. The leader of the group was Quicksilver. You had their pilot, Bluegrass, the twins, Steel Heart and Steel Will, and hailing from the planet Mime, the Copper Kid. The show had some really colorful villains, which unfortunately contrasted against the blandness of the Silverhawks themselves. Albeit, they had a lot of character building moments and great storylines, and they're just downright awesome. The show ran for one season with 65 episodes. The toy line yielded 19 action figures, 3 creatures, and 4 vehicles. Now, let's take a look at a little bit more than half of the action figures, and I give you my top 10 Silverhawks figures. One of the cool things about all the figures in the line except for maybe one, were that they came with little sidekick flying animals. Most of them were birds, but some of them had bat-type creatures. Now, these little things had really neat features, and we'll go over some of them that come with the top ten figures. Number one on the list is Quicksilver, the leader. He came with Tallyhawk, which was his personal hawk and his best friend. He was actually like the logo of the team, the mascot. And it's kind of sad that they even gave him the metal dip. I mean, did he even have a choice? He's a bird. He can't say yes or no. That That's straight up not cool. Quicksilver had the feature that if you squeeze his legs, he would go into a T-pose, as the kids call it nowadays, with his fabric shiny and cool fabric wings would come out. Now, let's be fair. All of the Silverhawk figures, besides one, had the exact same feature. The exact same shiny, awesome metal bodies, and they can all be lumped in with number one, actually. Now, Tallyhawk had a feature that if you would bump his beak, his wings would come in like a slashing attack. So if you kind of pair them up, they'd be a really nice dance troupe. Anyway, next on the list is the villain, Windhammer. Windhammer didn't come with a sidekick or an animal of any sort, but he came with his large tuning fork. His powers were that he could control the weather, so he would spin the tuning fork and create whirlwinds and stuff in 
space and on, on planets too. But what a cool design. The figure really captures how great the character looked from the cartoon. And he's just a really neat character. Now, you can really see the inspiration of some of the mutants like Slythe in this character design. And actually some of the character design from the Hobbit movie that Rankin and Bass did in the late 70s. Next on the list is Mumbo Jumbo. The awesome robotic bull character. Now, I don't know if he was created or he's from a race of bull people, but this dude was awesome. He would go from two legs down to four, and he had a charging attack. And the toy kind of mimicked that, that you put him down on all fours and hit a button on his back, his head would hammer out to simulate a bull's attack, a rush. Now, Mumbo Jumbo's companion was Air Shock. Airshock's ability was that he could turn into a large hammer that Mumbo Jumbo could use. So when you folded up his wings and kind of pulled out his head, you had the head as a handle and the wings would form like a war hammer of sorts. Really neat character, really neat design. Just love Mumbo Jumbo. Number four on the list is Hot Wing. Hot Wing was a magic based character that came a little bit later on in the season. He was an African-American character, and like I said, he utilized magic. He kind of had a Green Lantern thing going on because he had to recharge his magical batteries every like 14 hours or something. And if he didn't, he would drop dead. Now the toy's feature was that you could wind him up, and when you squeezed his legs, he would spin. The difference that they made with him with the other Silverhawks was... The other Silverhawks, uh, their wing harness was kind of a backpack, and it kind of limited the range of their arms. But with Hot Wing, they only attached a clip to his bicep and down to his wrist with the fabric. So he had more mobility of his arms. So when you squeezed his legs and he spun around, his arms would shoot up and his wings would be essentially like a blade attack. His animal companion was Gyro. Now, Gyro's attack was if you held him by his little feet, he could spin around. His little wings would go in, and he'd be like a little buzzsaw type of character. So that's very cool. Very cool character. They're all very cool. Here I go again, just like I did with the last G.I. Joe. I used the word awesome so much. I just can't help myself. I live for this stuff. Next is the character Hardware. <clears throat> this villain looks like how Rankin and Bass designed the orcs in the Hobbit cartoon. He looks awesome. He has a huge backpack, and in the show he had a large rifle. And his backpack, he could pull any gadget out of it that he needed. Now the toy came with a huge backpack, and what you could do was put his companion animal inside of it. His companion was named Prowler, and he would fold up like a little missile and be hidden within the backpack, but when you hit the button, he would spring to attack and shoot out of the side. Number six on the list is the evil leader, Monstar. In the cartoon, Monstar had this awesome lion type of look. He had a huge, wild mane, the cybernetic eye patch thing, sharp teeth, but when he basked in the light of a certain star, he would turn into this large, metallic, spiky, just evil-looking dude. Both of his forms were really great. Now the toy, it would spin. Unfortunately, his, for lack of better terms, his lion form did not include the awesome hair. And that kind of took away from it. But it was still cool that he would spin and change his torso and head to the normal version, to the spiky robotic version, if you will. His companion bird was named Sky Shadow. And Sky Shadow was pretty much like Tally Hawk, that if you would push his beak or snout or whatever it was, his wings would close in. Number seven on the list is the villain Molecular. Now, Molecular, a great design. He was a shape-changing character on the show, and he could appear in almost any form. Now, how the toy kind of 
had this feature was that you could pop off his arms and his legs and his body could rotate within itself. He had a large molecular type of chest piece in his head. Now, I think his design was supposed to look like, you know, atoms and molecules with the bumpiness of it. What was really neat about it was, like I said, you could pop his limbs off and you could remake him in different forms. His companion bird was a Volt-er. supposed to be Vulture, but Volt-er. <clears throat> now, Volt-er would kind of fold up like a shield type of thing, and it could be added to the form of whatever you would like Molecular to turn into. It was pretty neat. I mean, it lacked a little bit of imagination. I mean, it would be cool if he too would snap apart and add pieces onto it. That'd be pretty cool. But, alas, they didn't do it that way. Next on the list is Condor and Jetstream. Now, Condor is a retired Silverhawk, about the same age as Stargazer. And this dude had it better than the new Silverhawks. He only had a cybernetic arm and the helmet. Rest of them seemed human. So he didn't uh, really sacrifice as much as the other ones and he can retire and live kind of a normal life. He's kind of a private detective now. And the animal companion that he came with, which he didn't have in the series, is a bird named Jetstream that can clip onto his back and provide wings for him and some firepower as it has some missiles. Also, it comes over the top of his head to give him like a space helmet kind of look. Very neat figure. His cybernetic arm in the toy could shoot like a grappling hook. Very neat. Number nine on the list is my favorite villain, Buzzsaw. I love everything about him from his green armor to his yellow saws. And when you push down on his head, his saw blades would actually move. This robot was awesome, and he is just a great killer design. His animal companion was Shredditor. And what Shredditor could do is you would push his head in and his wings would spin this way, like a buzz saw as well. Great design very it's a great monster toy in general because when you would push his head you would lift it up and his metal teeth would go like this so that's a great feature offered as well but when you would do that these blades on his chest would start spinning that's just really neat and that's a really neat feature now for an honorable mention and that's bluegrass this was the pilot of the silverhawks and he didn't come with any wings. But what he did come with was an animal companion named Sideman that was his guitar. Now, in the cartoon, he would use his guitar to make, like, sonic attacks. And there was a villain, I forget what her name was, and she used a keytar. So they kind of fought each other a lot. But <laughs> one of the things I really found neat about him was he had a mohawk. So the figure has a metallic mohawk that when you put on his cowboy hat, the mohawk would poke out of the top. As silly as it is, it just, I think it's really neat. And it was neat that they included his awesome guitar and his hat and his mohawk in the toy. Now, number 10 was the silver hawk that everybody loved. And that's Flashback. This was a silver hawk from the future. And he was green which was really striking compared to the other colors that they came in. He was a nice shiny green, and his wings were actually molded plastic that would pop out of the back, so they, had, they weren't attached to the arms at all. His animal companion was Backlash. And with Backlash, you could remove his head and his wings, and they were connected, and they became handcuffs. So... Imagine that, a bird flying in and then handcuffing you. That's pretty neat. Anyway, this has just been a quick look at 10 of my favorite and what I think are the best Silverhawks toys. Like I said, they didn't make that many. There were only 19 figures made, and maybe four of those were variants of already existing characters. But this was a show that could have went places. The toys were 
cutting edge for the time and they should have sold a lot more than they did unfortunately when toys don't sell cartoons got canceled real quick unfortunately it's a practice that still goes on today anyway like i said real quick 10 best silverhawks toys so until next time keep being rad stay dorky peace out